All right, so hello and welcome. Today I'm here with Håkon Andreasen. How are you doing, my man? I'm doing great. I'm uh, feeling fresh. I'm uh, ready to start to, know, to get to know you. Awesome, awesome. I'm actually here also to get to know you because uh, <laughs> we're doing the Behind the Man series. So it's all about you today and I can't be more stoked. Like you are super young. What are you like, 21, 22? Yeah, 21, yeah. 21 and you have already a very impressive set of skills and stuff that you did so yeah. uh, what's like the most impressive thing that you think you did up until today um maybe i, I was um i think it was uh, like uh, spring in 2022 um my uh, my podcast in norway was uh, blown up because we used uh, a little bit of TikTok and Instagram and so on. And we got on like uh, the 46th place in Norway, like the top podcast in Norway. Wow. So uh, it was very on Spotify. So it was very uh, cool to see. And uh, that's so I impressive. It. That's so, so impressive. You, you need to teach me, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to blow yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, our podcast is like we talk about uh, our life and a little bit uh, girls tips and boys tips to girls and just uh, you know the boys talk and uh, just uh, no filter just uh, yeah take uh, take take it from there you know it's a no filter boys talk i love it i've had like a couple of guests before here and um it's been great because no one uh, everybody's so honest you know everybody mm. In the group these are really great guys great coaches and they just like use the no filter so i was thinking about doing a no filter a get together or, or something like that um, yeah. sounds great yeah so, so. Uh, when when did you start podcasting um started in may 2022 oh my god so you started and already blew up <laughs> yeah yeah, it was a crazy ride, and uh, we got so many opportunities after the, you know, the top 50 podcast, and we started to have live podcasts here in Norway. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we uh, got in front of a crowd, and we just sat down and just talked like it was a normal podcast, but just in front of people, and people can enjoy and drink a beer or something. Yeah. Wow, that's that's great. How that how has that experience been? Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> the first time I was uh, shitting bricks, you know, I was so <laughs> I was, was so scared. I was haven't uh, done anything like before to talk in front of people and you you have to be entertained, entertaining as well. So uh, it was a fine line, you know, you have to be entertaining, but you have to also be, you know, you have to have a flow in the conversation with the boys. No, definitely. So uh, what would you say was the biggest difference? Like you said, okay, it's in front of people, but like, what was it for you? Why was it so different to talking in a room with your buddies to talking in public with your buddies? Um, because you are more uh, uh, vulnerable to the other people, you know, they can, uh, well, they can easily uh, judge you for what you say if you are uh, like talking in front of people and if you're just in the room with the boys you can't you can't actually hear the reaction from the people live uh, but, but live uh, you, like did you have like hecklers or did you like feel the energy of the room shifting or maybe being a little bit judgmental or yeah i was maybe uh, pro projecting a little bit you know what i thought the people to pe what i thought uh, the people will uh, think about us but it was very, very weird, weird because uh, when I got on stage, I just uh, was in a flow state, you know. So I just forgot and just was in the mode, in my uh, mode, you know. Great so stuff. It's, it's, it, it, it is the greatest feeling I can have when you are in the in a flow state, and it feels amazing. Yeah, I mean, do you have any tricks how you go into the flow state, or do you like just go up there and you're like, here I am? um maybe just not try to be someone else you know just be yourself 
and uh, the universe will, uh, you know, back you. Well, it will take care of you. So just uh, go out, go out there and just be authentic. And yeah, just uh, be be yourself. Will will be my biggest advice, to people. If cool stuff like uh, when I was your age, that was almost ten years ago. Uh, mm. I don't remember myself having anywhere near these thoughts or these experiences. I mean, I was a musician. I did perform on stage. Um, this was also a thing that I needed to work out. And I remember not being as nervous as, uh, for example, my colleagues or that not having this issue with nervousness. But just like seeing where you are and how you talk about it, you're so much advanced. I mean, uh, big props for that. Yeah, thank you. It's. Uh... I think um, my biggest takeaway also in doing all, all, all of this is uh, you can yeah you can uh, can do a lot a lot of, a lot in life if, if you just see the opportunities and yeah trying to to be proactive. Yeah. Great, and I mean as you said, the universe will just give. Yeah. So- what I'm super curious about is how exactly did you come across Julian's material? Uh, how across did uh, how did you come across Transformation Mastery, uh, mm. and how did you decide that you actually want to go this path of the becoming a Transformational Mastery certified coach? Yeah, so uh, it's all started in early 2021. I was. Uh, I got. I was on. Uh, was uh, in 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 school and uh, and uh, yeah. My mother is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. I heard, uh, <laughs> She isn't. Uh, <laughs> I haven't told her about the podcast. Okay. Yeah, we can. Uh, so. My uh, my my friend Noah he is uh, working as an assistant coach now in Julian. From uh, he's uh, like uh, he's trying to uh, to see if the people fit in the programs and so on. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, we was uh, we was doing li- a little bit of uh, network uh, ma- marketing before, and um, we had like a Scandinavian group, like affiliate group with a little a lot of people. And he was um, was posting a, a a YouTube video of uh, Julian of you have to let go of desire. So I just I saw it, but I, I didn't uh, watch the video. But uh, I just recognized it and uh, just I didn't I just forget forgot about it. And uh, a few weeks a month later later I was just uh, searching through the the old uh, Facebook group Scandinavian group of anything and uh, I, I saw the video again and I uh, clicked on it and I was uh, hooked with uh, Julian's uh, uh, Julian's uh, um, uh, opinions and his uh, letting go methods and so on. and uh, I just I bought the transformation academy program and uh, yeah, it was a snowball effect. Then about the uh, transformational uh, mastery and high vibe, uh, uh, the high vibe. What's it called again? It's high vibe communication. Yeah, that's yeah. And uh, the last, uh, when I got into the certification program, I was in Copenhagen on his live tour. Ah. Yeah. So uh, the, it was there. I uh, had my calling. And he's, uh, was asking for people. Uh, when when was that uh, talk in Copenhagen? Uh, it was in now in summer, like in Jul- July, I think. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, because I've been to Copenhagen recently, but I don't think I've been to the same date. Uh, it oh, was yeah. I was in August, yeah. Yeah. Or September. I I also don't remember. It was recently. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so that's my story to why I'm in, in this training for certification program. Nice. And what do you think will you get out of it? Like, what do you see for yourself in the future? Where Where is this going for you? Mm, I think I will uh, 
um, to help, uh, just to uh, have opportunity to help uh, the people with uh, these amazing methods that Julia have been working for in uh, like 15, 16 years, I think. So just to give something to the to the people that struggles and can help help them from the rock bottom to to get to get up so yeah i mean it's really crazy right how many people are struggling and how many people are just uh settling for life right uh, he was mm -hmm. also i just saw like today a video of him that he recently posted of uh, comparing it to video games that most people say oh i'm i'm really bad at life or i'm uh, i'm in apathy or i'm in depression and i don't don't do stuff but they actually do go and play video games and mm. these video games they level up and and they put a lot of work into it and a lot of hours and a lot of dedication and mm. they just do that in video games so they're not really depressed or apathetic they're just really enthusiastic about that and they yeah. could do the same thing with life, although I do admit sometimes, depending on your environment, it can be a lot harder than just the first level of any video game. Of course, yeah. Um, uh, and a lot of people have lost the sparks in their eyes, you know. You yeah. Don't see, you don't see the the life in them anymore. So yeah, I mean, it's very very sad to see, but therefore it's. Uh, the world needs, you know, more uh, coach like us, and so. Definitely, I, I remember when I was younger, uh, what I would do as a joke when I was feeling a little down. Um, I lived in Zurich, uh, which mm. is like the bankers' city, and then I would just like go where these bankers work and just look at them and see the dead look in their eyes and just like feel good in comparison to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a, a fun way of looking at it. No, but um, I think a lot of these methods are super important and they're like not even that new, right? I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of them go back to um, very ancient teachings, uh, also some religions, some kinds of meditations. Um, he's also recommending to read Marcus Aurelius, uh, the Roman emperor. So there's a lot of knowledge that we mm -hmm. as humans kind of always maybe had, but also a lot of it got forgotten. And especially in, in today's day and age, I don't know, how's been how's it been for you growing up, uh, like with all the social media and distractions and how did you manage to like find yourself and, and be your authentic self? Um, when I was growing up, I was, uh, you know, the, the class, the class clown, you know, try to put on them put on the front and try to be like the funny guy and uh, I, I completely understand that yeah yeah and uh, yeah I was I was like in uh I don't know in my life up to I was like uh, yeah the, well, like 18 19 so it was just uh, I was in a, in a like a loop if you can say I didn't uh, I didn't have like uh, I didn't saw life like it, it is now after you know af after all this the self the self help uh, books and all the stuff I've learned now so I was like yeah, I was going to school I was playing video games was with friends playing going to school video games going so it was like a I was it was in in a loop you could say and uh, the, the social media and was uh, I was very um, how can I say I was very uh, dependent on what kind of friends I had on like other plat platforms you know on so on uh, social media like Snapchat or Instagram or on online you know so I think it was uh, I uh, I was a little bit dependent on that yeah. I remember myself when when growing up that that's when the social networks 
uh, really came up. Like I remember having MySpace and Netlog. These are like really old. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we started, this was when I was in high school, we started chatting on those and use the MSN, like the Microsoft Messenger. And we would chat like up until four in the morning and then try to get up to go back in school. So um, I was really fortunate enough to kind of live in this first wave uh, of all this digital communication and uh, what was happening. And I remember having it for a long time uh, and it making me miserable for a while. Mm -hmm. So I remember like after a few years, and this is still until today, I, I have this reflex. It's probably so ingrained in my brain that every time I open like, up the browser, I type in FA for Facebook, just like to, to go uh, to this web page because that was what I did like 50 times a day for mm. a couple of years and this is sometimes even still now a reflex although I deleted all my socials I think I didn't have any social media for like six or seven years mm. um, it was right about the time when I turned 20 21 that I said uh, this is enough for me like I really really want to focus on my life and the things that matter so I deleted it all um, and then came back to it maybe three four years ago again yeah yeah i think uh, i was very lucky because i'm born in 2002 and uh so when i was in my early early age ages i was allowed outside and play with my friends because we didn't have an ipad or didn't have all the social media so it i was like uh, right before the today's you, you know uh, the kids have now iPad and all this iPhone and it's crazy. Yeah, so I was in in the golden age before. Uh, all right, I, I, I was aware that that you were too. I uh, also thought of myself that I was like the stick and ball kind mm. of kid, just going yeah. around and and actually making new friends, but. I don't know where this is going to go. Like, I don't know if I want my kids to actually have a smartphone or to actually have a tablet and uh, connect on these digital platforms. Like, they are important. Um, they're super important for marketing, for reaching people, for staying in touch. But they're also somehow making us really uncomfortable for having normal conversations, right? Yeah, you lose a lot of social skills with just being online, you know, to talk. It's a lot different to talk to people in real life and on online. So you, you lose the, the common skills and social interactions. So I'm guessing you did the high vibe communication. What has your experience been with that? Was it like this power switch that you just turn on and you're like this super guy? Yeah, I, I was. Uh, yeah, he did uh, did uh, wake me up, you know. To the just I just uh, reprogram my social skills. Can you say so? I I, uh, I learned a, I learned a lot lot about the basics, and when you know the basics, it's a lot easier to to do the advanced stuff. You know also, and um, yeah, and my uh, I think my uh, my strongest sides to me is I'm very. Uh, I can be very funny, not not try to be funny, but I can be natural funny, and it's very helpful with the high web also. So I can, you know, I can use it with the the basic skills and so and so on. But I have never been very bad to in social skills before. But when I did the program, I just uh, took it to another level, can you say? And I learned to ground myself also to. It's very important not just to use the techniques, but it's very important to uh, to ground yourself to the earth. And yeah, definitely. You feel the energy. It's so powerful. Definitely. Do you also sometimes do it like without shoes and socks? Yeah, yeah. Like go into the grass. Yeah, of course. And it's so uh, yeah, it's so powerful to go outside outside on the grass and just feel the yeah feel the grounding, feel the energy, feel like the feminine from the ground and you using your masculine so it's yeah yeah definitely i remember working with a woman so she was my coach and she still is uh a lot on, on these things and i think one of the very first things 
that we fixed was um, just taking ground and connecting to the ground and doing it wherever. Uh, mm. And apparently, like from a spiritual perspective, it's easier for younger people to connect to the earth than it is for older people. I don't know why, but I remember it was like, I think one of the first sessions. Um, I was born in Serbia and then I was living in Switzerland. And then she asked me like, where do you feel more at home? Like, do you feel um, more at home in Switzerland or in Serbia? And uh, I said like, I don't know. So she wrote on a paper, uh, each country on one paper, and then she put it on the floor, but I couldn't see which one it is. And she made me actually stand on those papers and I was just like standing there. I didn't know which country was where. And then she asked me, do you feel like stronger on one leg or do you feel like weaker on, on, on the other? And it was super interesting to find out that even subconsciously I was connecting uh, different things with this uh, earth connection and where I am right now. So I've come mm. a long way since then. Yeah. Of course, I'm uh, just used the uh, when I meditate, I also use you. Do you have a heard of the emotional scales, you know, from apathy to uh, peace? Yeah. yeah. So I also use use uh, the, the the pyramid, the pyramid, you know, so um, just to feel, you know, it's like uh, if you feel the courage, you can feel also the the under uh, the, the things under courage, you know. It's like like yes, in a zest, you know, or uh, happy is also always under the courage. So if you if you uh, nail, if you can feel the feelings in the courage, it's very easy to feel all the acceptance and peace. So, yeah. I mean, courage for me has been a big one. And uh, I think for many other people, too, because it's uh, I guess it's one of the first uh, emotions that are like in the in the neutral spectrum mm. or in the positive one, and everything below would be uh, classified as negative, right? Yeah. So what I also found interesting is um, I think uh, Frederick Dodson wrote a lot a lot about this in the book uh, Levels of Energy. This is also one of the recommended books to read, and it's. I don't want to say it's become my Bible, but it's been very useful, um, especially also for me as an artist, just to find out where is one person at or how can I uh, transform like the room, like all the state of all the people there. Um, the job as an artist oftentimes is just to make people feel things. So mm -hmm. I will try to go from one emotion to the other and usually I would structure my events so that it starts somewhere and then explores a little bit of the of the negative and of the harder things in life and yeah. then go up. So there, there's like a transition of, um, it's a little bit like a release. It's a little bit like getting in touch with the darker stuff and then in the end, being able to breathe. I think ultimately that is also why people go to concerts, why they go to any kind of, like th there's two reasons to go to entertainment, either to forget about your stuff or to to feel better about it, uh, to actually release it or work on it. And I really try to go into the releasing mm. of all of it. Yeah. And uh, what I wanted to mention around the, the, the dots and, and wanted just to ask you about your experience because you also said like the video with desire uh, sparked your interest mm -hmm. with Julian. Uh, Frederick Dodson actually explained that just having TVs like uh, worldwide, uh, the television distribution and people watching TV put a lot of people out of depression into desire because suddenly they saw other people having these great lives and, and amazing opportunities and they wanted to have it for themselves. I mean, this is also a little bit the thing about the American dream. Obviously, a lot of culture is centered around America, but mm. just like moving so many people from, yes, it is one negative scale onto the other negative scale, but it's still a lot of energy upwards and suddenly there's some kind of motivation and there's some kind of longing and I need it, I want it. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, uh, the, the neediness is very, uh, it's very scary, you know. It's very, um, 
toxic to to need something, you know. And uh, yeah. To Can you it. relate somehow in your life that that you were maybe at some time in a place of need and then you came mm-hmm. out of it and and you're saying to yourself, oh my God, what what have I been doing? Because I certainly can. Yeah. Um, yeah. In um, was uh, like in my uh, maybe well, 15, 16 years old. I uh, I w- had had the uh, no. Uh, it's like a. Do you know what auto is? It's like a vehicle in for 16 years old in here in Norway. So. Okay. So I, I, had like, I had like a, a little mini vehicle, you know, a, a little car, you know, because I for 16 years old and uh, I was very, very needed for it, needy for it. And when I got it, I was very, uh, you know, I was very, um, I bragged a, a lot of, uh, I bragged uh, a lot and uh, just, uh, I didn't uh, actually feel, hear, hear myself there. I just was in like a facade, you know. So I was driving around. I think I was like, the, I was the shit, you know, and I was the top of the world. Yes. But now uh, it was, yeah. After I was like 18 and the phase was over, I just realized it was, it was very silly, you know. Just it wasn't me to, to be the to be the guy to to crave attention and um, yeah just it didn't uh didn't match up so then i re- just realized try to uh to remind myself to uh, to be more uh you know to be more authentic to myself and not try to be someone else because other people will val- validate me you know yeah yeah i get it i mean um, this is, well, let's say one of the most basic things that even make you weaker as a person. Like mm. I can see so many people then just try to define them through things and it loses so much of their personality in that, right? And somehow it's so easy to 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 feel crushed or to, to, to feel um, very sad or unhealthy let's say something uh breaks or or it goes away it it gets stolen it's Mm. like your whole life depends on on this thing it's crazy yeah i think uh it's um when you're like flexible to life it's very easy to live then you are not against life you're just flowing with it you know so uh, I have learned in the late years to be more flexible and not, uh, it's like small things, you know, if you are in the traffic, you know, and someone drives a little bit slow, you don't have to be uh, very irritated about it. You can just accept it and it is what it is and just go on. Because if you if you can manage to uh, to do the small uh, shift in this, like the micro um, situations, the the big the big things you know in life will be much easier to to uh, handle because you can you can you can manage to uh, accept the small the small uh, things that will uh, maybe in uh, you know in the the old the old version of you, the old uh, version of version of you if you know makes sense can. Uh, these are some very wise words yeah so i'm trying to be, be more present in the moment and try to be more flexible also to things and accept things as it is and not to uh to have like a agenda to it if it makes sense yeah yeah totally like i have had a hard time letting that go mm. Yeah. So it's a, a very long way uh, to find back to authenticity that I didn't start at all with. Yeah, but uh, I did uh, all the all the things you uh, all the things you did like in the past. It forms you what you are today, you know. 
Definitely, so, yeah. So it's all, all about the journey. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely we, we cannot change anything about the past except for mm. how we perceive it right now. So yeah. obviously I do find it very useful and I've um, also had a few um, unfortunate things happen to me, which I also find very useful now because they, they are actually really just forming me and forming my experience. And I do believe that there's a reason for everything like you can mm. call karma or, or whatever but i do think that there's like this connection with the universe that we can just um feel and that we can contribute to yeah yeah i, have a, uh, I think I, I think i heard this quote in the program to julian or someone similar to him it was it goes like uh if something bad that happens in the past, you did the best with what you had, like uh, what vision you had uh, then, there and then. So, so uh, yeah, you can't you can't change the past, but you can uh, you can change how you perceive it now. Definitely, and I mean, there's a lot of uh what we are also working on in the course right this this mindset thing and questioning the assumptions which for me is just like this building of beliefs mm. we have so many beliefs around things why something is or or why something isn't what's valuable what isn't and um i've really started questioning a lot of it um just for the sake of it just for the questioning because i find it really funny to experiment with new thoughts. So mm. what was like maybe your biggest belief change or or your biggest assumption that you found in life that, oh my God, everybody told me this, but this is actually not true at all. Um, uh, maybe when I, I shift to, I had a lot of expect expectation. Like expectation is that the word? Yeah, expectations. Yeah, expectation. Yeah, I had a lot of uh, expectations to things in life, and I projected a lot of lot of this, a lot of it to it. And when I uh, decided to just let it go, let it go to the expectations, and just be in the now, and and um, not try to project. A lot of my past, the traumas, the things, and just okay, maybe my uh, my inner voice say says something, but I try to remember. I try to remind myself that uh, it just um, my inner voice is like a neighbor. You can think, you can figure about it, think of it. So, um, the thoughts, the negative thoughts in your mind is isn't you, and uh, it's very very. Um, important to uh, to remind yourself to it um you are like just a con you are uh, conscious of yourself but you're not your own thoughts if that makes sense yeah so yeah. so uh, yeah if that answered answered your question or yeah it it did um i'm a little bit also experimenting right now with with some other thoughts and I'm studying a lot of different cultures also in the past and how people behaved. And I found it super peculiar that we have like the same things happening. Like it would be mm -hmm. the same situation, same kind of people involved. But in different cultures, people would have different emotional reactions to it. Yeah. And it seems to me that there's like a lot of narrative going on around this theme uh how you should feel yeah and just this this building of identity and also this conditioning um from when you when you're a kid i mean obviously we need social lubricant we need some rules to work in our society but i think as humanity we are at a point where we can redefine these rules and in in a much larger sense mm. yeah everything we do in life is we Everything we do in life, we try to to feel good, you know. Everything we do, we try to feel good. Um, and everybody is everybody is on their own journey. But it was it is very similar things in the journeys, if that makes sense, you know. 
where all the situation are like, okay, it's, it's uh, unique. It's very similar also. So um, yeah, the similarity is very uh, crazy to think about if you if you see it in the big picture. Definitely, but also like what you said, I think this is a great point that everybody tries to feel good. Mm. It also means different things, right? Because uh, even a hundred years ago, this feeling good for the most people was to find a job and to to make a living and to really mm. earn money because otherwise they wouldn't even be able to survive. So there's a lot of this fear of not even surviving, right? So just mm. having their basic needs met for a lot of people was uh, just groundbreaking. I, I've talked to my grandparents a lot who both came from a village who both were um, my grandmother was not so poor but my grandfather was very very poor mm. and they just went to the city and tried to make um, the most of their lives just like work and get as much education as possible but it was super hard because he was so malnourished he wouldn't get even accepted into military school and this was like the only school that they would pay for his schooling so then he tried to do it um by himself, like uh, advanced, like after high school uh, mm. stuff. I think he just had just only primary school and, and a little bit of uh, high school. And he tried to get into advanced learning because at that time, like this is first half of the 20th century, knowledge was really, really, really important. And uh, looking also today, uh, sometimes when I see uh, youngsters in school and they don't want to learn and it's super boring and I I just thought I think my grandparents also maybe didn't want to go to school but they knew that knowledge was valuable and mm. today we maybe have forgotten it but maybe it's not valuable at all like we have AI what do we care yeah it's, yeah it's uh, developing yeah So what has like your experience been uh, now that I touched on AI? Do you use it? Are you like the master? Mm, I uh, haven't used it so much, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a great tool. You know, if you uh, just if you uh, making a reels video, the AI can text automatically if you if you speak in English so it can text what you said. So it, it will, uh, if you use it right, you will uh, save a lot of time and energy and may, maybe use the energy on other things that requires more. So if you, if you use AI right, it's a very good tool, I think. And uh, have you used it like in your past projects regarding your podcast, for example? How did you guys like make it really a big thing? Mm. No, we haven't used it. I don't think we have used it yet. But it is you can like uh, ask AI what we're going to talk, what topic we can talk about, and they will get get us a lot of suggestions. So maybe in the future I will use it more to help me with ideas or help me to uh, yeah to edit a video or text a video. So I will uh, definitely try to to uh, use it very um, wisely. Smart stuff. Mm. I, for one, have noticed that I think a lot of my writing I can do with AI, like even if it's drafting like a little bit of a complicated email um, or just something that I can do easily with a prompt and then just tell him, give me a lot of stuff. It should be for this and this it's really great. Like I correct maybe 10% of it and it's just like my assistant that's doing everything for me. It's really mm. great. Yeah. It's very, uh, yeah, it's very cool to, to have uh, a tool like that. So uh, we hope, we hope it doesn't uh, get uh, used bad. <laughs> it surely will. I mean, there's, there's yeah. no, uh, no doubt that it will, but it's like with every tool, you have the yeah. good and the bad. And of course, pros and cons, yeah. 
um, I th I just think it's it's super exciting, and uh, I also think like it's super exciting that you managed to do something uh, about this podcast that so few people actually do, and especially like in in your age. So I'm a big fan. Yeah, um, I, I don't speak Norwegian. I I would love to to listen to it, but um, yeah, it's very hard to understand if you don't if you don't uh, speak or understand Norwegian. Yeah. But um, so you you from Zurich, yeah? Yeah. That uh, like an Alpine uh, country. Uh, yeah, well, do you watch Alpine? Right here it isn't, but uh, there are large parts of Switzerland that they're, they're very Alpine. Yeah. Wow. Do you watch? Here in Norway, it's very uh, it's very uh, popular to watch winter sports like Alpine or go skiing or like you know. There's a lot of stuff to do uh, of that here. Like I don't know how many ski resorts uh, are here, but I'm guessing over a hundred for sure, maybe even two, three hundreds. Um, mm. I went skiing last year, and I also did like this. Um, not slope skiing, but but like um, I forgot what it's what's called the name in English, where, where you do like just a flat surface, and you have mm. this other kind of very um, narrow skis, and and then you ski on on that track. It's like a yeah. super long track, and it's uh, very exhausting to do. Yeah. Have you done it? Um, I'll, similar, yeah. It's like very long and tired and yeah. And and do you do like other winter sports? I, I like to ski, yeah, to go down uh, hills and just uh, because skiing is very similar to grounding because you just let your feet just you know be with the with the skis and you just were fascinating, yeah. So you can you can draw a little bit similarity to the grounding there. If you, if you are uh, skiing and um, you just uh, yeah just feel feel the skis and just feel the environment is amazing. Great stuff. So where do you go skiing? Like around Alta? Yeah, Alta or in uh, Finland. It's very popular to go to Levi, the place. It's a big uh, mountain with a lot of a lot of ski resorts and a lot of cafes and yeah nightclubs in the night uh, so very... how many people are we talking here like thousands yeah yeah a couple of thousands yeah so it's very popular in the easter it's very very popular to go there it's Eas like yeah. easter yeah then uh, it's it, it isn't so cold and it's still uh, a lot of snow in the mountains and sun and just good vibes Oh, but there, there's no like Easter for Switzerland is is end of the season uh, for oh. winter sports because usually, as you said, there's a lot of sun and then uh, it's, uh, the snow starts melting a little bit, so there's mm. a lot of um, danger of avalanches. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the culture here is like we 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 start our uh, ski season in like Easter time and. A little, a little bit before, maybe, but like Easter, March, March, yeah. Yeah, crazy. And when do you stop? Um, yeah, it's go to the, to the May, early May or uh, late uh, April. That's a very small window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, of course it's. Uh, there is uh, there are some some people go skis in January and yeah December, so but it's uh, more uh, more uh, common to go in March April. Yeah. So it, it's still open, but just very few hardcore skiers are are doing their stuff. Yeah, you could say you could say that. Yeah. All right. So talking about your other activities, like you seem to be someone who does a lot of different things. Um, yeah. We haven't taught, touched on anything except for the podcast. So what what else can you tell? Uh, I have uh, done a little bit of, do you know what Troyer is? Singing Troyer. It's like, um, how can I say it? 
I am not familiar with it. Yeah, it's uh, singing in a group with people, you know, in like the, it's often classic music or a church oh, choir. music. Choir, choir, yeah. choir, yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah. you, I got you. Yeah. It's, it's choir, choir, uh, choir, yeah, choir, choir. It's <laughs> a little, uh, yeah. So I've done a little bit of choir and uh, have also producing a little bit of music itself and DJing. So uh, in so in summer I was uh, w- uh, with my podcast also. We just have live music on f- festivals and performed and uh, yeah, just jumping around the stage and having fun. Great stuff. You you know I'm a choir conductor. I, I do that every Monday. Oh, okay, okay. I have okay. a little, little choir of old people who, who really like me, and then I get to. Yeah, do... I was singing. Do, do you know what tenor is? Yeah. Yeah, I was singing tenor. Hmm. Can, can I see your neck? This is like a singer thing. Yeah, you do have a tenor's neck because, uh, no, actually, no. Tenors would, would have like very short necks. Oh, okay. Yours is longer, like you could be baritone or bass. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, like, uh, I was tenor in my choir. So I was you're the you're youngest. High up. Um, yeah, I was uh, tenor and uh, was a little uh, more, uh, not, uh, yeah, we have two tenors. We have one like uh, more, more deep in the voice and more i was like more light you know more uh so i was I, i'm not sure what this call in what what is the different types of tenor in english do you do you just say tenor well you would just have uh, like uh for men's voices you will have like tenor one and two if you have like a lot of yeah i was two two yeah yeah so you were two but two is lower one it's is lower. higher Okay, I was maybe the lower one, yeah. You have you have like tenor one, tenor two, and then you have like the baritone. And if you want to switch, mm. you can also have baritone one and two, and then you have bass one and two. And if you like really want to go super low, you have like contra bass or super deep bass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was singing about a few months. Um, now I doesn't sing anymore because I just. I had fun while it lasted, but uh, it wasn't. Uh, in the end, it just doesn't uh, feel right, or it wasn't. So it doesn't. It wasn't. Uh, the reason wasn't the, the the people in there. It was very. It was very nice to me, but I I didn't. Uh, I lost a little bit of the the spark, you can say. But it's, I can smile uh, back when I uh, think about it the uh, adventure I did there so yeah it's very uh, cool uh, a cool thing to uh, to uh, think about I totally understand I also love singing in choirs and then after a point I was like yeah I'm, I'm fine I'm finished mm-hmm. with this um, just need something new something else but uh, yeah I mean it's it's great stuff and also this would be something that's very grounding I yeah, yeah. exercises with my singers to just like uh, let go tension where it's not needed, uh, connect to your body. I mean, especially for singing, you can tell if someone has a powerful voice just because they know where to relax in their body and where to have the tension. This is super important. Mm. Yeah, and uh, you have to have the, I don't know uh, what you call in English, but you have to have like uh, in in your stomach. You have to have that uh, the ground, the base uh, yeah, in the ten- voice. Tension, yeah, tension, yeah. yeah. He, my uh, yeah, my teacher there was very uh, was very uh, um, was very um, what's the what strict? The name of it? Yeah, it was strict to it. Yeah. To the you have to have tension in your uh, stomach and you have to uh, yeah sing it sing with uh yeah good uh, pronouncing and yeah yeah this is this is like the basics I had a singing teacher who uh, said well you know if you sing you should like be feeling like you're on the toilet <laughs> like 
<laughs> use these muscles, right? So um, one is the diaphragm, right, that that's pushing down, and the and the second one is I don't know what's it called in English, like the um, but the muscles in your damn. I, I forgot it, but it's like just yeah. the muscles against um, that are like at the lowest part of your torso and then they're working against. And, and if you mm -hmm. have like this balance, um, it's really good. And it also makes for a very powerful voice and that you can project and that you can just like, um, well, also feel grounded. But I mean, it's also very powerful. It's very commanding uh, if you can speak also in that way. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people who are asking, oh, well, how am I going to do with public speaking or stuff like that? Just these exercises are super mm. good uh, to fi find your ground and to really uh, transform your voice. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, and, uh, sometimes we uh, we have to like sing like the words was going backward in your in your head. You know, the, you have to have that. Uh, you have to sing like it was going back back uh, work, but yeah, so that it was sound like right to it. To, yeah, so it was very many techniques you learn and it was very fun when it was fun. And uh, in the end, it wasn't uh, that fun to me, but it was. Yeah, was... I, I mean, traditionally also, that's very interesting, but traditionally a choir singing and especially like what you what you just described with the sounds and that's not a very masculine thing to do. Um, mm. Also, like right now, uh, all the choirs here and on of my colleagues uh, and the ones I'm having, they're all having trouble just finding men to sing. Mm. Obviously, these are older gentlemen. Uh, a lot of uh, choir singers are 60, 70 years old plus. So yeah. you have that, but it isn't really a masculine thing to do. Um, just like feelings and stuff. Ugh. No, it's yeah, it's uh, not very common to men to sing in choir. But my father is he was uh, inspired by my uh, my uh, performance on stage, and he just decided to also sing choir, like the man's choir, just awesome. like the basses and tenor uh, voices, and yeah, awesome stuff. So. Mm was that never an issue for you like did you ever think about it uh, about this masculinity part um, or did you like always feel very certain where you are uh... yeah. I think uh, the key is just to own it you know of course it is uh, where it isn't very manly but um, it's just are very certain you you are very uh, you're very safe to yourself and you're very certain this is the right choice and you just follow your guts and where uh, you very um, it will uh, it will profit you in the long run you know so i think you just have to own it i beg this advice to people who wants to do like choir or something that isn't the mainstream okay, so. definitely so definitely. i also never gave a fuck about any any of this stuff i remember even when i was i think four or five years old my mother told me i would just go around in the garden plucking flowers and then just like doing doing stuff with flowers and i, I don't even care like i own stuff like clothes from the ladies department because I just went in with my girlfriend and she was buying something and I was like, yeah, this is cool. I'm, I'm going to buy this. Uh, and I never had an issue with it. Other people did. Um, I was lucky enough to have such an upbringing that it wasn't really an issue for me or I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see a lot of people struggling with it and, and falling out of their roles and like, who am I if I'm not like this man? And mm. It, I don't know. Do you know the Liver King? Yeah, yeah, I heard of it. Uh, th this dude is so hilarious. Like I, I followed him. I think maybe a week or or two ago, and I was just looking at his videos, and he's like this pumped, completely muscular guy that only eats like raw meat and ha hasn't been to the hairdresser like I think in thirty years or something. It's just yeah. full testosterone. Yeah. 
it's super hilarious to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a character. Yeah. But uh, also when uh, like the man and crying also that we are not supposed to cry and uh, but I think you have more balls if you if you dare to cry in front of people. Yeah, that's a big so one. You, you you are more brave if you don't. Uh, if you think you if you don't uh, cry in front of people, if you think you're brave, but you're really brave if you try if you can cry and show your emotions and very powerful. Yeah, that's a really big one. Have you ever cried in front of a crowd? Mm. Or in front no. of people? Yeah, um, I have cried like uh, in front of my family when. Uh, when my grandmother was like on his, her deathbed, you know, it was very uh, emotional. And uh, but then I also tried to hide it, you know, because this was before I did the transformation. So I did I also I tried to like look away and cry, you know, in the pillow. But I just realized now it's so much more uh, more powerful just to let let it out, you know, and show your emotions because. It's very uh, to cry is, as a it's a very good release, you know. It's, it's the best release in my opinion. Yeah, so yeah, so but uh, I will try in in the future to if if I feel like crying, I just cry. Don't don't, don't uh, try to hide it or yeah. Yeah, it, it does a lot to one's insides if if you have to suppress it and then. Mm. There's there's a lot of situations that even just like compassion uh, being there not being with with um like it not concerning me but just being there with other people and seeing their pain um also often bring tears to my eyes so i don't know if if um, that's something you can relate to yeah but i'm not that easily uh if i see something very sad i'm not the t- it's not enough to like cry but if it's impact impact me very personally or uh, some or to someone I, i'm really uh love you know then i will uh feel it more uh emotionally so it's it's very depending on how i'm emotionally attached to the situation or person yeah so but i will uh will try to be more uh, to be better to yeah to show my emotions you know um, we are very, we are not very good to talk about uh, feelings in my family, you know. So, so I think uh, every family, right? Yeah, it's very common. Yeah. Uh, except for maybe in Brandon's family, I think Brandon's family is just <laughs> yeah. off the hook. Yeah, no, it's amazing to <laughs> to see. And have you already had contact with him? Yeah, yeah, I uh, have a little bit message, you know, and so uh, we'll try to hold contact with him and maybe we can do a session to get the coach in Oslo. That's been very fun, so yeah. yeah s- sounds good. I mean, he, he was the one that, uh, that told us about Alta being with the Northern Lights and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> I, I always wanted to go to Norway. I mean, this has been a dream of mine since very long. I always want to go to the north. I've never been to Sweden, Finland or Norway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I also started watching like all these Viking series. And I was like, oh, my God, it looks so beautiful. I want to go there. And now I have you guys over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Like I, I, I have to visit someday. Yeah, you have no excuse uh, anymore. No, no excuses. No. <laughs> yeah. Now, but uh, but when when you live in here, you're a little bit blind to it, you know. It's uh, um, I think it's everywhere. If you are from LA, you're very blind to the to the beautiful in there. If you don't, if you ain't a tourist, you know. So it's yeah. But it's very beautiful here and. Uh, the northern lights and all of the snow and yeah. I actually noticed this exactly what you said the the blindness to these things because whenever you go somewhere else it's like super special. So yeah. uh, regarding this strategy, you should pick like the worst place in the world to live in, 
<laughs> wherever you go, it's just amazing. amazing. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also me, I live in a nature reservate here. So there's a lake like one minute uh, in this side uh, to walk. Um, mm. There's a nature reservate there. There's so much nature uh, just untouched. And I really started taking it in only last year and not mm. for uh, four years before. Um, just because after COVID, I had a lot of... Um, a lot of issues, um, especially like in my muscles and my bones in, in the legs and uh, hips and lower back. It was just hurting all the time. And then I started going cycling and I started mm. do, uh, doing this a lot. And then I started really noticing how beautiful it actually is here. And since then, I've changed Yeah, uh, my perception on that. Yeah, it's uh, amazing to hear it. So it's all about the small stuff, you know, in the everyday life, you know. So if you take in the small stuff, you will eventually have a more uh, more uh, colorful life and more uh, powerful life. So, and just to collect the small wins, you know, many people are just hopping on to uh, the next, the next thing, to the next thing, the next thing. So if you just uh, take in the wins and just replay them. And just yeah, give yourself uh, a little uh, clap on your sh on the shoulder, you know. It does a lot of you. It does uh, yeah, it does you very well in the long run. It sounds like a very good idea. Mm. Yeah. So uh, so I'm trying I'm trying to uh, to t to collect the wins and try to. Uh... How do you do it? Like, do you have a journal? I know of people writing down 10 yeah. things every day that they're grateful for or they're happy with um i, I don't write down 10 things but i, I write down like uh, maybe three or four highlights of the day you know because if you uh, if you write highlights of the day in if you do that do this you will uh, you will more uh, you will see the beautiful in the you know so uh, yeah, it's very powerful to write down the highlights, and you will suddenly you will you will uh, think about a, a memory you didn't uh, have before because it was in your subconscious. So it's a very powerful tool to to do, and uh, yeah, and ask maybe talk to a close friend about uh, what what did I do right, you know. And they will help you to guide you in the right direction. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you also write a lot like the rest when you're learning stuff, when you're thinking about stuff, or is it just these um, these takeaways? Um, I can uh, if if you, if it is um, if I if I have much to if it if it happens very much in in a small amount of time i will more break it down if you if that makes sense to write it more fairly you know so it depends on what i do and what happens if, yeah do, do you have like daily routines like some life hacks that you do every day some some uh, processes yeah i do i um when i wake up i don't uh, try to look so much in the phone because it's, it destroys your en energy, you know. So I go outside, like bare, bare, bare feet, and just uh, breathe in like three rounds, just the fresh air, and just think about the high vibration color, you know. So for me, it's purple. It's very I get a f good feeling when I have have uh, that color in in my intention because it's all about the intention you know it it, it doesn't it, it isn't a needy thing you just have intention to you know so i do like that and i have a wim hof breathing and a heart opening meditation and a little i have also morning release of uh, julian so i have i have a little uh, routine there i try to uh, do it every every day Nice. Uh, then, what's this heart opening meditation? 
Yeah, it's um, a guided heart opening meditation from a guy named Brian Begin. He's like a dating coach. Okay. So uh, I watched. I have bought. Uh, I'll, I'll have bought a program of him, and he's very uh, to to the grounding. You know, to feel the masculine. It it isn't a a uh, program you learn about uh, openings and uh, how to talk to girls is more to realize that you are good enough and you can ground yourself in in it and use the masculinity so the meditation is like you open your heart and um, just feel the room you know feel if you look at the painting to feel the painting you know and just uh, say yes with your heart opening and then you close your heart, you know, and say no to the things, and you just you feel, you feel the the both sides, and then you just open again, and yeah, it goes for like ninety minutes. So it's uh, very, I'm more, um, I can feel more energy from other people now. You can you have like a string from your heart to to theirs, you know. You can feel the string, and it's very. Uh, amazing you know you have like you can feel feel the energy in their eyes and it's very powerful great stuff can you also feel it like through skype yeah of course yeah yeah but you can and um, i try to activate my uh, have you heard of the third eye it's very powerful if you if you can unlock it you uh it's it's a whole new, uh, a whole new, um, a whole new uh, emotions. Um, it's amazing. Great stuff. Do you do also like any physical exercise? Yeah, I go. Um, I'm not um, not much. Uh, I did a lot of uh, you know uh, muscle training, you know, in the gym. But now I'm more like yeah, go outside with my dog and just walk around. And so it comes and goes, you know, it's like uh, different phases. And yeah, I'm very happy with uh, the way I live now. And uh, yeah, I don't have bad. Um, how was the word? I don't have um, bad. Um, Your bad conscience that you're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. So. I have, uh, yeah, I have like a very uh, clear mind now, right uh, where I live now. So, and no. you do, do you have any, do you have any routines similar or? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have very similar routines. Uh, depending on meditation, it varies. Like there are some days where I feel I really want to like take my time and meditate a lot, and there are some days where I just do maybe even like a quick breathing and then that's like enough. It really depends on my mood. Like I can connect with myself and see like if, if there's um, some stuff that I need to let go or not. Since I've started cycling, like I haven't been doing this since July, uh, but all the rest of the time, this has been a great thing for me just to connect with myself and it helped me so much um, to start letting go on the go this was a really groundbreaking experience for me because earlier i used to do the meditation to like um, fix stuff that would like get caught in the system but when i was really using my body a lot somehow the system just got much more easier uh, to communicate internally so um, I became much more like water or if, if something happened or went through me, um, it was just fine, you know. Uh, I had a accident, it's now almost two months ago, uh, which I was driving downhill with maybe 40 kilometers an hour, maybe a little less, and um, I crashed into another bike. So I flew in the air and I really thought I'm going to die at this moment and i was like yeah i'm fine with it you know just just how how things are and it was very um just flowing through me and then almost nothing happened i just had like two fractures uh, in my hand but mm. uh, like my helmet broke the bike broke everything broke but i didn't so yeah i mean i'm just 
grateful for for everything also that uh, that happened there but just figuring out how much this has helped me in terms of not just overall health but even um this connection to the ground to myself and and just to to letting go it was this was like my main thing that i used to do every day just like hop on the bike and do at least an hour and sometimes i would like go for fun two or three hours just feeling it yeah yeah it's yeah, it's very, uh, it's very uh, amazing to hear. And and when you and when you uh, when you find something that is very, uh, you know, very giving to you, to do it's very fun. It's very fun to do it as well. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I've noticed for me these ch- things changed over the years. Mm. As you've said, with the gym, like depending on where I am, I also used to go a lot to the gym, uh, maybe five years ago. Um, mm went like every day and I did the sauna and cold plunges after and it was just a great time uh, it was like the first thing that I would do in the morning just go to the gym and then uh, do the cold plunges and then I stopped doing it because I didn't feel like it anymore yeah yeah it's uh it comes and goes and it's in, in phases you know so definitely like right now I am in my what, what time is it um uh, it should be 88th hour of not eating anything yeah so how is uh how is it going now are you uh like do you feel tired or no not at all like i I feel a little bit of aching in my legs um and back and this is uh i've read up on it it's because the blood gets really sour when you don't eat for for such a long time and then i took a bath like uh, just before our talk um with with some salts that are actually um uh, countering uh this acid and everything that's going on in the body so it does feel a lot of better otherwise energy wise it's awesome like my brain is super clear um yeah. i'm on this uh I don't even know what, what, what the what the name is called, but it's just like when when the body starts using up fat to break it down into sugars, um, because our brain apparently only can work on sugars. And now I'm yeah. just working through my body fat, and it's a, this constant uh, stream of energy. I wouldn't be able to like go and do high intensity stuff, uh, but like easy going walks. Um, easygoing uh, stuff to do amazing amazing yeah and uh, the thing the thing about fasting is like the food tastes amazing when you first eat you know so have you, you done it already yeah i've done a little bit uh no fasting in the morning and eat uh, a little late of the day so i have done a little bit of fasting and uh, it's very uh you um the food just tastes amazing when you first eat so it's something you can uh, looking forward to i am definitely looking forward to it i already bought the potatoes i'm going to start like with one boiled potato um because just the digestive system needs a little yeah. bit of to um, regulate back to where it was before so i'm just gonna start small with something easy to digest um and i do love potatoes so that's gonna be it yeah, yeah. sounds <laughs> sounds good so uh Hawkon, it's been a pleasure having you do you have something like a closing remark um something that you're really looking forward to something that you're excited about something um that you want to share with all of us mm, yeah i'm looking forward to uh it's uh, beginning to new, new uh, the winter is coming now, so the, and the snow here and the northern lights is just around the corners, <laughs> and uh, the the, ex, the examen is very close. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, it's just very fun to talk uh, talk with you guys in the Facebook group, and uh, the community is amazing. I feel uh, the support, and I feel yeah. I'm not I'm not the only one there and it's very it's very a safe safe place to be. So, awesome uh, man. Awesome yeah. man. Really happy to have talked to you. 
I will definitely reach out more to you in future uh, to get all that marketing stuff going. I mean, you seem to be a really, really expert guy on social media, so I don't want to miss that. Yeah, of course. So, Hakon, it's been a great pleasure. Uh, I wish you all the best. Yeah. Uh, have a great day. Have a great week. Um, and see you soon. Yeah. Thank you.